All right, so we're talking about revolution. Um, the, 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 the possibility of, uh, of uh, changing our current conditions through some kind of coordinated, vaguely social action. And uh, well, as we, we mentioned on the on Monday, the, the the most common reaction to revolution and 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 well, more specifically again to 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 people wanting to change their conditions is uh, is repression. It, it just doesn't seem to be a a very desirable thing. Although um, the the author of the the author of the of the reading on Monday was. Um, was uh, um, pointing out that that revolution seems to be kind of a, a part of life, really. It just seems to be a a a a growing pain of pretty much any given system by the fact that uh, the state tends to gel people into a certain format of society, and that society changes. And if the system doesn't change with the people, then it's going to reach this this breaking point that we tend to call revolution. But as I uh, kind of intimated on the, on Monday, the the revolution is nice. That the example of the the January twenty fifth revolution in 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 Egypt um, as a example of a successful revolution. That's in they managed to achieve their goal. Their uh, the, the state of emergency was removed. The uh, the president was was removed, uh, but the uh, resulting system is uh, another uh, single party state and essentially the same kind of police repression that existed before. So the system itself has, well, the face I guess of the system has changed, but the system has has remained for the most part. Um, there was no reading for today. There was a movie. You may have watched it. Um, focusing on the Quele people of uh, of Liberia, on the resolving conflict among the Quele people. Um, Monday speaking people, and uh, so Liberia is on the on the western side of Africa. In case you do not know, uh, Liberia was uh, bought by the United States to repatriate uh, descendants of slaves and created as a uh, as a place for uh, returning uh, African Americans um, who well, uh, no longer wanted to be in the United States, but also uh, the United States didn't want them there either. So that's what Liberia was created for. Um, but of course, there are people who already lived in Liberia before, uh, um, well, before slavery, and certainly before the United States made that place Liberia. Uh, the quality of one of these people, uh, although they are not uh, 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 historically people from uh, from Central Liberia, they are, uh, as most as it usually happens in Africa, pretty much all over the the, the west coast, uh, all the way to. Uh, into Central Africa, they usually um, the the their point of origin is uh, is pointed to uh, to North Sudan uh, from the 16th century, but they were displaced from North Sudan by um, by the, the 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 English and by the 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 Muslim people who took over that part in the in the 16th century and uh, started moving west to uh, to places like Mali. Uh, to Guinea and including Liberia, uh, some of them went to went south as well into uh, Rhodesia. Some of them went into Ethiopia. Some of them went into Mauritania. I mean, they're they're pretty much spread out everywhere at this point in time. Um, but of course, they retained their uh, their ways of life from before they were displaced, and uh, that includes their language. That includes their uh, their. Uh, uh, Social systems, I suppose, and that includes their justice system that is uh, displayed in this particular movie. Um,
So the way they are described in the movie ever so briefly is that this is a, a, a civilization that is a very intent on the rice and uh, rice as the, as the primary crop, as the primary uh, way to survive, I suppose, and that anyone who questions this, anyone who goes against that system that is uh, rice-based is, uh, is, is just causing anxiety, anxiety, fear, and resentment, as they uh, explained in the documentary. Um, and well, obviously, right, this is your only source of food, um, and this is the, the, the essentially at that point in time for the Quelle, uh, the the only thing that allows them to to be um, the their only connection to um, to existence. So, um, um, certainly uh, an important part of the lifestyle, although. As the the, art, the 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 movie points out, it's not the most important because anything that is related to their survival turns out to be equally as important. And uh, the the documentary focuses especially on cattle, um, as is often the case. It is the case in Sudan, it is the case in Africa, in uh, in, in uh, Ethiopia, <laughs> as we mentioned before. It is the case in South Sudan, and of course, it is the case all the way across West Africa, including. Nigeria, right next door, and uh, while also, in as much as they are not uh, historically uh, hurting people, they have taken on to to hurting. <clears throat> and um, as is very common amongst people uh, in in non-industrialized societies, um, the the central organization revolves around the family. Uh, Again, defined bro uh, broadly. Uh, I don't know how much you have taken anthropology classes before, or how much you make sense out of that. But so the the, the word that we typically use in anthropology to refer to family is uh, kin or kinship, because when English speaking people use the word family, they think of uh, their mom and dad, they think of their brothers and sisters, uh, cousins are already within the English speaking world, kind of already a distant part of your family because you know we tend to be separated across places and across households and whatever and uh, well obviously anthropologically speaking that is not the case always and it doesn't have to be the case and certainly it is entirely possible that you live close by to your cousins as well uh, so trying to to break from this this the uh, the connotations of the word family in the English language, they, we typically use the word kinship to to broaden the, the, the reason why people might call themselves family, because it could be a family that goes around uh, uh, ethnic groups. It could be a family that goes around the religious groups. Uh, it, it's much broader than the, the nuclear uh, single household family that, that exists in, in, in our, or that is the most common in our um, in our background. Um, and so the, the way it's described in the documentary, the Quelle has a, have a somewhat of a unique situation when it comes to, to politics. They have they have central organization, they have chiefs and chiefdoms. Uh, and uh, and so different places will will recognize an authority, uh, a central authority, you could say. Um, but there doesn't seem to be on the on the broader scale a unique like central authority to all the central authorities, if you will. So each king or chief seems to be pretty much equal, and on top of the chiefs, there are parent chiefs, and each one of them is pretty much co-equal to one another. And uh, uh, um, so there's a hierarchy of chiefs in which all of the hierarchical levels are co-equal. Which usually, again, right when we're thinking of central organizations, we tend to, to narrow it down to having at the top one single uh, point of origin for authority, and uh, that's, that's clearly not the case for, for the quelling. Um, and uh, the result of that is that you may have your central authority that is 
far away. That is from a different group, which in terms of uh, the making sense of the justice system is rather useful as is displayed in this particular article because in this documentary, because the uh, and sometimes the, the disputes involve the chief themselves or their family. And in that case, you can't have the chief of your community be in charge of educating a dispute that involves the chief. So then you need to go to the parish. Uh, but before we get to that, um, so the, 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 the bonds that are made through the, the villages and through the social groups are connected through uh, their daily activities and including feasts that are uh, economic and social at the same time. Uh, feasts reward constituents who meet their obligations to the chiefs because the chief as the central authority has the possibility to organize these feasts, to redistribute uh, meat, which is rare, to redistribute rice, which is not plentiful, to redistribute uh, 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 whatever was achieved by the community as a group. So the sense of duty to the chief here, or, or the obligation to the chief, is really an obligation to the society that everyone does not just their part, but kind of goes a little bit above and beyond what would be ordinarily expected because they have this understanding that it's not really an ordinary expectation that everything is very in flux in your daily life. And so you can't expect that the food uh, supply is going to be steady. You can't expect that. You can't expect that really anything is going to be steady in your daily life. So you have to be constantly involved in the daily affairs of your uh, of your society. And uh, you are, as a result, rewarded when uh, when things are are working out. But the only way this can be achieved is through this this very intricate system of of interrelationships where people are equal until they are no longer equal. So within those individual groups, they have these uh, these uh, fraternities, if you want to call them that, uh, uh, because the, uh, the the general um, the general system of authority is patrilineal, meaning it goes through uh, the male uh, line, although. The uh, the the inheritance the the heredity system is matrilineal. So everything that is not political is within the uh, the family of the mother, and everything uh, uh, kind of organizational, if you will, uh, goes through the father, including uh, the household. So your your home will be the home that is ancestrally that of your father's side of the family, but and say the, the the rice fields in which you eat, those will be uh, ancestrally that of your mother's family. Um, and again, within the smallest group, because then you have those levels of hierarchy on top of that. So uh, it, it is very much based on these uh, these constant checks and balances within the smaller groups and within them to make sense out of their own interrelationships, the relationship to the people themselves and the relationship to the chief. Uh, because obviously the chief as the central authority would have to make sense that everyone remains happy for the, the, the happiness to be redistributed as well. So the feast, as much as it is an economic activity, as much as it is a social activity, is also a little bit of a political activity and also to a wide extent what we have talked about in the class before this kind of good or, or happiness this very uh, intangible uh, uh, function of uh, bringing people together when they may not otherwise even consider themselves to be uh, to be together Um, yeah, so knowing that he had used this herd wisely, so by uh, uh, the, using the, the cattle uh, for, uh, for food and uh, making sure that everybody is fed. So in this case, from a, uh, an animal that is, uh, that is being redistributed in the feast, 
to carry out properly his duty as chief to bind his people to him. So to yes, work that social glue, and that's that's really the only way that you can make sense out of that. Uh, you can't reduce that glue, that bind to any one particular affair, knowing that the only thing that keeps them this people together is really that 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 all encompassing glue. Because otherwise they would live very happily without chiefs, without super chiefs, without paramount chiefs, without kings and whatever it is. And again, right, the, the vocabulary here, it's, it's obviously terrible, but this is the vocabulary that we have used for, for a few hundred years now to relate people um, whose, whose political system we don't make sense out of. They have their own word that we have translated by chief and king and, and whatnot. Uh, any questions about this? Um, you watch the thing. What 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 happens in the in the document? Um, so like, there's a conflict between like the regular farmers who don't have cattle and like the chiefs who do and one of the like the chief of the um village calf calf gets cut with like a machete but they don't know who did it so they bring him like this guy from the city to do this uh ritual to prove like guilt right uh -oh. So there's two different conflicts, right, with uh, with cattle. The first one is that there's a, a calf that is found injured that belongs to uh, to the to the chief, and so the 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 the, the, the people have to to figure out how to make sense out of this. But once they figure out that this is uh, uh, once they knew who it is, there there's a oops, there's a um, kind of this whole. So a men's system that has to be enacted so that the, 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 the kids who are found guilty of, of injuring the cattle uh, essentially apologize quite profusely to, to the chief principally, but to everyone because this is a, a public display uh, to, to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Um, but that so that first incident is uh, is very easily solved by uh, figuring out who did it and uh, by figuring out that the the children are 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 the cause and well they, they, you know there's only so much you can blame kids for being kids really uh, however you know taking out the the aspect of of animal abuse and and, and all that because the the so the the, the background to it is that the 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 calf went into a field and destroyed the crops, the rice crop, which obviously hurts the family in a way. And, and so the the the, the children uh, beat the cow to to or beat the calf to uh, well probably to chase the calf first of all, but also to 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 prevent it from happening again, and probably to 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 lash out some of their uh, anxiety fear and resentment from the from the early thing so there's a um, well i guess you could call that a rational explanation or rational uh path to this particular thing and and it can be solved internally by uh, uh by um, apologizing to to the chief to dole can pay uh, uh and the the first step, I mean, the most significant step that they can do in this case is to admit their fault and to say, you know, they made a mistake and, and blah blah blah, and and, uh, and again, this this very performative sense of of justice because what what are you going to do? I mean, they don't have money that they could repay. They don't have. Uh, 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 they, they, they don't have anything of value that could replace the value that was lost. Um, it doesn't seem particularly fair or logical to beat the children as a result of beating an animal either. So the, the, the only way that they can solve this is through this, this, this very elaborate uh, uh, 
I don't know. It's a mix of amends, a mix of, uh, of, 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 of apology, a mix of atonement, I'm sure, uh, uh, whatever you want to call that. But it's, it's really a, a very, very complex conversation that has to happen to, to, uh, to enact justice here. Um, and then, so then another, uh, uh, another calf is, is found injured. Uh, so obviously a, a, a bigger, bigger question. And uh, down that one, there's no immediate victim. So again, right in the context of a village, it's, it's easy to find out who did what and who uh, uh, made what kind of mistake. And they have this sort of like, uh, I don't know, true crime type of investigation as to, oh, this looks like it was made with a machete with a hook in it. So let's find in a village who has a machete with a hook in it. And, and, and so they try to find the, the culprit locally, but but they don't they don't find it. And so uh, this is when as a group they decide. And as you can see, you know, everyone is involved here. Again, a very public court where where everyone is gathered to find what the best way to do is. And again, because this is a chief that is involved here, typically speaking, the chief should be would be the the ultimate authority to judge on this. But it could be literally anyone in the village. And if it is anyone in the village, then they have this obligation to the chief. And so the chief would be obviously in a conflict of interest here to 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 respond to this by anyone, literally anyone could be a culprit. And well, there, there's no way for for the chief to to obtain any kind of um, any kind of immediate satisfaction. So they call in the higher authority, the the the, the paramount chief from the from the village over, to be able to uh, to do that and. Of course, again, right, talking about atonement and, uh, and apology here and performative, but Dolokin Pei is able to, to breathe once he knows that there will be some kind of justice happening. That is, a thing is going to happen, that justice is going to be served by calling on to that higher authority, and, and hopefully he's going to be compensated justly for uh, the loss that he has incurred in this, uh, in this context. And the process goes on. I mean, they they go through uh, building a court. Uh, uh, this 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 little uh, structure here that 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 is put together for the for the purpose of uh, of welcoming the paramount chief for the purpose of uh, essentially what you could otherwise call a court of justice. Um, and uh, there are two options, as the the narrator uh, points out. The number one option is uh, trial by ordeal. And the second uh, uh, form of justice is the one that is the most common for us, which would be uh, uh, witnesses, cross-examination, and uh, you know people being logically, rationally, uh, whatever, investigated. And well. The choice is up to Dolokin Pei. The, ch the choice is about the person who was wronged here. What path for justice do they choose? Which is not something that we typically do on that other hand, uh, giving a choice. So what would you rather? Would you rather we pick this form of justice or that form of justice? The ordeal or the standard justice system? So I put the question out to you, which which one would you do? The the standard trial by jury or the trial by ordeal? In case you have not watched the documentary, in this case you don't know about European history, trial by ordeal used to be very common also in Europe at some point. So very, it took various forms. The forms that are mentioned in the documentary are uh, hot oil, hot knife, or poison. 
hot oil and a hot knife work about the same. You put hot oil or hot knife on somebody, and if they are burned, that means they are uh, the culprit. If they are not burned, that means they are innocent. Uh, prior by poison means that uh, literally they take poison. If they die from the poison, that means they're a culprit. If they don't die from the poison, that means they're not culprits. Uh, so reasonably simple, reasonably clear uh, path for justice here. Because, uh, well, the birds don't lie. Poison doesn't lie. People will die or not die from it. Or trial by jury. So which is your favorite? I think it's really a question of favorite. I feel like trial by jury is much more favorable because I feel like trial by ordeal, like in this, when they're talking about like being, uh, uh, what's it like being touched with the, being like pierced with a hot knife? Like, I mean, I feel like most people would flinch. That doesn't indicate guilt that it's hot knife burning you. So I feel like trial by jury. Would in some ways be more fair just because I don't know, like if you're gonna die from poison, you're gonna die from poison, you know. I don't, I don't know. I feel like both can have bad outcomes, but at least with trial by jury takes a little bit more time to that or something. You may have a chance of you know feel that you're coming through you know, physically scarred by I feel like they both contain bias, mm -hmm. just that trial by jury can not include bias. I prefer to. No bodily harm. That's, that's a good preference, I would say. Take it. Yeah. And building off what you said, it's both contain a lot of bias, right? If I was to go before a jury for a crime, I, ima I imagine in the United States, I would have a very different likely outcome than, say, African American, just due to societal prejudices mm -hmm. about how you do crime. So depending on who you are, I think both could be equally bad. So in a way, it's nice to know that the knife doesn't discriminate. So, and in fact, this is what the look and fate chooses. It chooses the trial by ordeal rather than the, what do you call it? Palaver, the discussion about. Um, but why? Why does he choose the ordeal? Because he has, there's no witnesses that have been come forward. There's no like other evidence, but also. They kind of have to find a culprit to restore like order in their village because it's like such a source of tension that if this crime uh, wasn't punished, people would keep hurting the cow because they resent them. So I feel like the chief had to do something that he knew would find a culprit. So he has two aspects here. Number one, like life stops when that happens. Because while the chief is involved, and if the chief doesn't have resolution, then none of the activities will be able to continue until the chief is able to do his work. So it's an impediment to the life of the village that the chief is encumbered by this. So that's definitely one part. And the other part of it is that, well, if somebody is able to get away with hurting the chief's uh, cattle, that means anyone could be able to get away with hurting the chief's cattle, and that's just not acceptable. So there's this big imperative that some kind of justice be restored here. And by justice, we mean the larger order in the very Aristotelian way, although very few chances that uh, that the Quelle were uh, doing this because of Aristotle, uh, but um, that 
you're considering this 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 public health issue of well, we're doing the thing that we are supposed to do so that we can keep on doing the things that we are supposed to do. So the ordeal here turns out to be somewhat of a better solution. Julia, you mentioned, in fact, you would prefer no bodily harm. You have to think that this is probably the preference of most people who are involved in this conversation. Meaning that if you as a person from the village saw that your friend, your neighbor, then your relative of some sort is subjected to bodily harm unfairly because you were actually the criminal, it's a pretty big incentive for you to say, well, I mean, the worst thing that could happen to me is I'm going to get burned, as opposed to living with the guilt of condemning somebody else to be burned. So there's a big social pressure that is involved in this, that the, the trial by ordeal will only proceed in as much as people believe in the form of justice that it dispenses. Makes that exact same argument for a trial by jury, by the way. Yes. I thought it was interesting about like the social pressure, like in the film, push the guy who did it to come forward because first they did, okay, we're just going to burn a representative or see if a representative from the village gets burned to see if like, it's someone from our village. And then once the guy who like actually did it said he did, they didn't like have to use the ordeal on him. They just believed that he was the culprit. Okay. Yeah. I mean, isn't that the worst that could happen in that case? That you you found the culprit and and that you condemned the wrong person. I mean, that's obviously the the worst outcome that could come, at least for people who have to live with one another every day, because somebody's going to get found out at some point. It's just interesting to me that they didn't they don't they didn't use the ordeal on the guy who said he did it. Yeah. And not only that, but then the chief is kind of bummed that he doesn't get justice because they found the culprit and that's all that it took. So yeah, the ordeal in that case definitely works as a deterrent. But the order is restored, of course. People get to eventually agree on the who's the culprit and eventually get to move on with the way that life is supposed to work. The uh, director slash author of the documentary wrote an article about that very court system before, uh, but uh, you know, there's only so many people who are going to read anthropology journals. There are much more people who are going to watch the uh, documentary if it comes out on PBS, you know, by much more, I mean like five more people. Um, which is double the audience of the average anthropology journal. <clears throat> One can approach the transcripts of the trouble cases with a second analytical framework and emerge with a deeper understanding of the implications of the contrasting descriptive attributes of the court and the house palaver. And this is why people don't read it. Remember that the coercive tone of the courtroom hearing limits the court's effectiveness in dealing with matrimonial disputes, especially in affecting reconciliations. The moot, so that's the name of their, their court, on the other hand, is particularly effective in bringing about reconciliations between spouses. This is because the moot is not only conciliatory, but therapeutic. Moot procedures are therapeutic in that, like psychotherapy, they re-educate the parties through a type of social learning brought about in a specially structured interpersonal setting. So the palaver, the moot, the courts, the jury type system has its own kind of healing effect or therapeutic, as as Gibbs calls it here, because uh, because your 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 dirty laundry is is aired out in a way that well within the context of your household, if you have a dispute. So here, you know, this is. The, the article is, is much broader than just the cattle, so here it's focusing on the on disputes within a couple. Um, 
So the street wizard couple is much more effectively solved by uh, getting people to just air out the laundry. I just going about so exactly what happened, what led you to this dispute? So it's taking away the, the context, maybe the emotions of it, the, the fear, the resentment, and all of the weird social pressures that exist, and just charting the path of this is what has happened as objectively as possible, because obviously you can't just separate people from their emotions. It's not a, a, a box civilization of, of, of no one being affected by anything. But on the other hand, Kind of with the benefit of, of hindsight, with the benefit of of, of, of having a, a, a third party involved, with the benefit of taking the, the broader context into some uh, in, into some significance without making it the whole context the whole significance. There's a healing aspect to to the, the, the jury system, which in the context of the ordeal does not quite happen in the lack of resolution that people get hurt or they don't. And if they're legitimately guilty, then they get legitimately hurt. If they are legitimately not guilty, then they get legitimately not hurt. This is at least the way it is designed. The hurt in matrimonial disputes and in marriage disputes is a lot harder to 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 compute in that case. It's not like you know you 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 hurt me physically. That definitely is a possibility, but it's not always the case. And as a result of that, there needs to be a resolution that is perhaps physical, but also perhaps more importantly. I mentioned here psychological, you could say mental, intellectual, or some kind of other way. But the value of it comes into the, the structure of it is that there's an order of the court, in this case, the, the mood court, the, the court of mood, that has been followed since ancestral times, since however long people have had marital disputes, and that is literally since the dawn of time. And if everyone who has ever had a marriage dispute has been able to figure it out to some extent through this system, then chances are you will also be able to figure it out to some extent. Again, keeping in mind probably the biases of the people involved, and uh, the broader system in which this is happening. But <clears throat> the broader system only applies insofar as this particular group. In other words, explaining the uh, US court system to the Quile probably would not be particularly valuable. And assumedly for the US American African American people who were repatriated to, to Liberia in those years, that system was as good as alien to them. This is not something that they have any kind of experience with, and not probably something that they would like to do, especially knowing that somebody might get unnecessarily injured. I think. Much like war, most people would not like to happen. So if you have a sense of responsibility to your community, to your neighbors, then you have a sense of justice. By contrast, if you don't have that sense of responsibility to your community, maybe because this community is living 3,000 miles away from you in another state, and the sense of justice becomes that much more skewed. If you don't have that sense of justice to your community because that person is from a different skin color, different gender identity, different uh, whatever, different language, 
then the chances are your justice will not be rendered in a way that makes everyone happy. <clears throat> so the example that Gibbs gives, US outburst against Yakpo quoted above was not responded to with matching hostility, but with but its inappropriateness was clearly pointed out to her by the group. Some of them called her aside in a huddle and said to her, you are not right. If you don't like the woman or she doesn't like you, don't be the first to say anything. Let her start and then say what you have to say. By speaking, if she heeds some of your words, the wilds will scatter and the blame will be on you. Then your husband will cry for your name and you have scattered his property. In effect, you are being told, in view of the previous testimony, her jealousy of her co-wife was not justified. So... They have, a, again, patrilineal system, so you are living in the house of your husband, but you can have several spouses, female spouses, and the specific example given here is co-wives fighting over something or another. <laughs> and the noun context, the people who know justice are the other wives of the village, the other people who have that same exact life situation and therefore know what it's like to be in that exact same predicament. And they are directly involved in the justice system here by telling her, well, we know what you did. I mean, in other words, you can't just say things because this is your own personal bias if we all know what it's like to live the way you do. And of course, this is why in the United States, we have these trial by juries, and the jury is supposed to be representative of your community. Because obviously, if you take somebody from outside the community, then they will be less apt to judge on the standards of your community. But of course, we know that's easily abused, because if you define community by a space, so let's say a city, for example, and within the bounds of a city where the court is located, the entire population is of a certain skin color outside of the bound of the city where the housing is not the same and the people are not the same, but the people are still falling under the um, under the, the authority of the court. And well, that's how you end up with uh, an unequal, un, uh, unbalanced justice system. Once this is over, the people can go back to their lives, they shake hands, the job was done. Justice has been rendered. Questions or comments on uh, this? Okay. Um, let's see. So on Friday, I'm going to rebroadcast the uh, the uh, um, conference that's happening in Davis um, on the Indigenous identity. Um, honestly, don't know how that's going to pan out. So that's going to be interesting if we get some time to to talk about it during. We might do that. I'm assuming there's going to be a break, but I don't know the schedule. So. Uh, it might be that the class starts in the middle of a talk, and so we'll start directly with watching the talk, and then if and when it gets a break, then we'll we'll go through that. Um, another point of order is that, um, so next week, the, the topic is freedom. I pointed out at the very beginning of the semester that you are free to upload whatever readings you want to do for the class. It would probably be better if you did that before we get to the beginning of classes. You want to do it during the week, it's fine, but you know, it's just easier when people have read the article. He says, and ironically. Um, so yeah, so keep that in mind if you want to, if you want to have a, a reading for next week, uh, let's do that. Um, 
and if you don't, I'll upload something and you'll have to pretend you read it. So. Um, <laughs> the people that we've been looking at in the past uh, couple of weeks are gathered around the uh, idea of communitarianism. Uh, as I mentioned uh, ever so briefly, and the reason why we're not reading any communitarian uh, type of philosopher, from legal philosopher, is that none of them actually use that word to define themselves. So it's not worth a whole lot of uh, uh, of salt, that, that name. Um, um, but um, so Walzer, McIntyre, uh, um, uh, are, are called communitarian by others, communitarianism as a political philosophy started from the same criticism of John Rawls that brought about libertarianism. Uh, uh, obviously, um, along the same lines of uh, this, this, this kind of indiscriminate form of justice advocated by Rawls, which in the grand scheme of things would not exist if we didn't have spaces to make justice happen. And obviously the case of the Coelho is working within that same or, or, or order here that uh, the, the justice is only good as long as it is recognized as good. And if you don't know how the justice system works, if you don't know the values of the people involved, then it becomes that much more difficult to have any kind of justice. So libertarians advocate that uh, there's no justice except for your own uh, personal uh, satisfaction. Um, which is one way to do it. The other way to do it is to see that there is no justice except for the community. But community is defined in a hundred ways by the hundred different types of people who do communitarianism, and it has its own criticism as well. We might mention some of that next week, depending on how the conversations go. But again, right, we're going for freedom, so let's see where freedom gets us. Um, so this is from uh, Alastair McIntyre again. In the course of trying to understand the relationship of a morality of virtues to one of law, I suggested earlier that the context which needed to be supplied to make that relationship intelligible was that of a form of community constituted by their shared project of achieving a common good and thus needing to recognize both a set of types of quality of character conducive to achieving that good, the virtues, and a set of types of action breaching the relationships necessary to form such a community, the offense is to be prosecuted by the community's law. The appropriate response to the latter was punishment, and this is how human societies do generally respond to such types of action. So the reason why we punish revolutions is because, generally speaking, the revolution is seen as a breach of relationship because we have this uh, quote unquote social contract that assumes we have all signed the uh, the agreement where we would be part of society. If you renege on that contract, if you go against it, you are breaching the, the social contract and therefore that is okay to punish, to use uh, uh, military tactics against because this is just not a, an acceptable thing to do. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, white collar crime, physical abuse, these things are not understood as breachable offense in the context of uh, Western European society. And as a result, well, they are not punished in the same way. And of course, you know, the, the depending on how those different people have figured out these aspects of communitarianism, the community can be more as big, more or less small. It can be used in the way that the Quelle do, where you have these local chiefs and then slightly uh, hierarchical systems of having co-equal chiefs where people are uh, uh, more or less indebted to one another and more or less recognized of one another's authority. So yeah, if you have any questions about that, we can briefly talk about that on Friday and maybe next week. Otherwise, I'll see you on Friday.